So typically in the scientific method, if you don't know something, you wait until you figure it out. So what they would say is when they look at the arguments that were given, they'd say, you're sort of plugging God in to give a final answer to the question, whereas they prefer to wait it out to find a naturalistic or a quote-unquote more rational answer to the question. Um, how would you answer them where it seems like we're giving them a very simplistic, we can't figure it out, so it's God? Uh, that's a valid objection for many things. It's called the God of the gaps objection. You know, you're plugging God into the gap of your knowledge when if you just allowed science to work a little bit longer, scientists, science doesn't do anything, scientists, if you allowed them to work a little longer, they're going to figure out a natural cause. For example, maybe many years ago, people thought that the gods were angry at us when we had a thunderstorm, right? And we said, it's the gods doing this. And we said, gods are doing this. And then we figured out later, no, this is kind of a natural phenomenon, can be explained by natural forces. So we looked stupid for saying God. We plugged God in the gap of our knowledge and said it was gods when, in fact, it was a natural a series of natural forces that did it. That's not what we're doing when we go back to the creation of the universe. In fact, let me give you a reason why it's not. I was at the University of Michigan. And an atheist, after I'd gone through the cosmological argument, in fact, I went through all the evidence that the universe had a beginning, an atheist got up to the uh, microphone, his name happened to be John, he said, Frank, if you give science more time, we're going to figure out a natural cause for the creation of the universe. I said, John, you're never going to find a natural cause for the creation of the universe. He said, no, we will. He said, I said, no, you won't. And he said, no, we will. I said, first of all, John, that sounds a lot like faith. Right? We haven't found it yet, but we will. But secondly, you're never going to find a natural cause for all of nature. Because nature wasn't created. Nature's the effect. It can't be the cause. In fact, for you to say, if you gave, you know, for you to say, just give science more time, I'll figure out a natural cause for all of nature, would be like me saying, just give me more time, and I'll figure out one day that I gave birth to my own mother. Right? <laughs> It's wrong in principle. If it's true that all of nature had a beginning, by definition, nature couldn't be the cause. There must be something beyond nature, something supernature, supernatural that created it. So it's not a the God, of the God of the gaps argument, argument. We're not arguing from what we don't know. We're arguing from what we do know. By the way, the same thing is true when you look at life. I only mentioned this very briefly today, but every one of your 40 trillion cells has a 3.2 billion letter genetic code. All the letters are in the right order, or a, a genome, or the software. It's all in the right order. Now, if you're walking along the beach and you see John Loves Mary written in the sand, you don't say, well, the waves did that, or the crabs came out of the water and made that message, right? <laughs> you know that you have positive evidence for intelligence. In other words, you wouldn't be plugging into the gap of your knowledge, uh, John or Mary, that wouldn't be illegitimate. Why? Because you know that you, you not only lack a natural explanation for John loves Mary, but John loves Mary is actually positive evidence for an intelligent being. See? And so the same thing, if John loves Mary requires an intelligent being, then that's what? How long? How many letters is that? You know, a, a dozen letters? If that requires an intelligent being, what about a, a word that's 3.2 billion letters long? There's positive evidence for an intelligent being. We're not just plugging God into the gap of our knowledge. Now, by the way, just from biology, you don't know whether it's God, right? Could have been some super alien, right? But ultimately, the alien would have had to have been created, which means there has to be somebody beyond the universe that created it. So ultimately, you're getting back to some sort of supernatural being.